Today we are joined by Leonor Tamaro, a nonproliferation expert and analyst at the Center for Arms Control and Nonproliferation. Thank you for joining us today, Leonor. Thank you so much for having me. Now, I'd like to talk to you about an issue that's important yet does not get a lot of media coverage, and that is nuclear reprocessing. Would you mind explaining to us really quickly what nuclear reprocessing is? Sure. Nuclear reprocessing is the process by which you extract plutonium or other materials from nuclear waste that comes out of a nuclear reactor. Um, and this can be done in the setting, in a military setting. For example, uh, India and North Korea have used plutonium reprocessing to, or reprocessing to extract plutonium for making nuclear weapons. Um, but you can also use it in a commercial setting. For example, this is what Japan does um, in terms of separating out plutonium from the nuclear waste from its commercial power reactors. Now, the Bush administration has proposed that the United States use reprocessing through the Global Nuclear Energy Partnership, or GNEP. Would you mind explaining what GNEP is and what the implications are for the United States? Absolutely. GNEP is, has been proposed by the administration as a way of expanding nuclear energy um, development worldwide. Uh, and, and it really has two parts. The first part is creating an international fuel bank um, where supply, country, supplier countries would be enriching the uranium and creating the nuclear fuel um, and, and selling that at reasonable cost to recipient countries. And then on the other hand, um, and the second part would be um, that the, the supplier countries would reprocess um, nuclear waste. And so um, it's being put forth as a way to prevent the spread of uranium enrichment and reprocessing technologies that, that of course, can be used to make nuclear weapons. Um, so, so the goals of um, the Global Nuclear Energy Partnership, um, if, if you just assume and, and don't debate the fact that it allows the expansion of nuclear energy, are, are actually very good. One, they propose to deal with the waste, and two, um, it proposes to allow the development of nuclear energy in a uh, in a as a non in a non proliferation um, as a non proliferation initiative. Um, but the problem is that the the implementation of, of this proposal doesn't match up to these to these good goals. In fact, the implementation and, and plan that the Bush administration is proposing would create. Um, a, a worse uh, problem for proliferation because um, specifically it would um, it would encourage uh, separating out um, a mix of plutonium that's actually uh, nuclear weapons usable so it would create more nuclear weapons usable material that might be uh, available to terrorists um, that's that's on one side and the, the second reason it's very bad for nuclear proliferation is that it would set a very bad example for, uh, for other countries in the world. Um, during the 1970s and 80s, the United States played a leadership role in um, discouraging countries that were looking at developing repressing technology um, and uh, encouraged these countries to abandon that technology and were successful um, in the case of Taiwan, South Korea, Argentina, Brazil. Um, and so U.S. leadership in this area is very important and if the U.S. reverses this 30-year practice of not reprocessing, it could have um, serious consequences and, um, and possibly lead other countries to seek to acquire this technology. Now, you're clearly concerned about the United States using nuclear reprocessing. Could you explain, are there any other alternatives for the United States to deal with this nuclear waste? Absolutely. And uh, the, the alternative we use right now, which is the ones through fuel cycle, which is where you, you essentially just use the nuclear fuel, pass it through the nuclear power reactor, and, uh, and dispose of the nuclear waste is actually the safest, um, cheapest, um, and best way to deal with nuclear waste. Um, and and there, there has been some delays in, in, uh, in setting up a viable permanent nuclear waste repository, but in the meantime, what we can do and, and what we are doing is using dry cask storage. Uh, and that dry cask storage can last about 100 years according to nu the U.S. Nuclear Regulatory Commission. Um, and it's a much safer, much cheaper way of, of dealing with the waste as an interim measure 
um, and this is proliferation proof. So, so there's no worries about um, nuclear proliferation because you can't make a nuclear weapon out of nuclear waste um, if you don't reprocess the waste. It has been a pleasure speaking with you today, Leonora. Thank you so much for sharing your knowledge on nuclear reprocessing with us. Thank you very much.